Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, I'm around the globe. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, please click on the like, sub like button if you like what I say. Click on the down button if you don't. And subscribe if you feel you want to get more videos from me. Um, I talk about a variety of things. Mostly, mostly what I talk about is to inform, educate, just advise, update, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so it's not really applicable to everyone at every particular time, but there's usually something that will um, apply or be relevant to a certain sector of people at, at, at a particular time. So today I wanted to talk about um, the dispatches and the NHS. Um, I got an email last night telling me that the dispatches was on um, NA, on on Channel Four last night and. I don't know what I was doing, but I missed I missed the program. And when I was searching for it for catch up, it wouldn't come up. Anyway, I went on to I went on to um, YouTube. I went onto the news. I went onto Google to see what I could find. And basically, it was more or less. I don't know how many of you saw my video about. It was called um, with Theresa May. Um, oh, I always do this. Yeah, I always do this. It was called something like, um, anyway, I'll, I'll remember later. But I'm going to put the link below because I found it, but I just can't remember the title. It wasn't a title that would have immediately um, made you th make you think of NHS. But it was about when Trump came in June last year and spoke to Theresa May about the NHS deal. And then he backed out and said, oh, no, there is no deal on the table. And um, I, ha I just put my little opinion in there. But what's happening now is that um, on dispatches last night, a previous uh, former chemist, he reckons that um, the price of prescriptions and the price of drugs is being discussed, that the NHS breaking up the NHS and sharing out bid by bid, bit by bit by... Um, with the American private companies and the big pharma companies, that's what's supposed to be happening. Um, but we still don't know. This is all supposed to happen post-Brexit. But the thing is, is that despite, you know, I think, what's her name? Um, we've got Boris Johnson saying it's not on the table. We've got a couple of other people saying it's not on the table. But, you know, when have they ever told us the truth? You know, politicians, they're not, they're, they're not um, noted for their honesty, are they? And you, the thing is, is that what I think why they don't tell people the truth is because they try to keep the waves just going very, very gentle. They don't want a big flood. They don't want a big ruffle. So they don't want to tell people up front now especially with brexit supposed to be going through what the real deal is so what they will do is they'll make out like oh nothing we'll get little snippets as we're going along you watch we'll get little bite sized little, little things will be leaked supposedly secret supposedly you know something's been leaked but really it's quite deliberate they want to put us on the alert of what's happening but then because it's not out there it's not confirmed we're left to speculate and that is the whole point they're kind of telling us indirectly but they're not telling us and that is the situation with the nhs i don't know i, I mean to, as far as i'm concerned i think um the UK doesn't have a strong negotiation. Um, they haven't got anything to negotiate with. Not really. You know, or the, it's not like they've got, it's not like we're in a good place at the moment. We're in a very vulnerable place at the moment. And sterling is going down and we haven't got no big businesses to bargain with. We've sold off, we've sold off everything we could have bargained with. And I'm not even sure what they have left to bargain with, except for the NHS. That is our richest commodity. And now 
the US want it. And what, I, what I'm thinking is, I don't think Boris really wants to put the NHS on the table. I really don't think he does. But to be honest, I don't think he has a, cho I don't think he has a choice. Because you're dealing with the big guns now. What are you going to be bargaining with? When you go up there and say, no, you can't have the NHS, and they say, well, we're going to withdraw this, we're going to withdraw that, you've already withdrawn from the EU European Euro Sorry, the European Union. What have you got left to give you any strength to say, okay, I'm going to stand my ground. We are not selling the NHS. You cannot have the NHS. It's, you know, we've got no power anymore. So I don't see, regardless of how, who doesn't want us to sell the NHS, I don't think we have much of a choice. And I think, you know, they're talking about, first of all, about the, the prescriptions. They're talking about paying for that, you know, much higher prices. They're talking about paying for to go and see your GP. I don't think that's bad. I mean, I was only quoting something ridiculous like 50p if you haven't, um, if you've missed a visit. I don't see how 50p can do anything because I think 50p is just the start to make it look okay. Get them used to paying 50p and then in a couple of months we'll up it, we'll up it and we'll up it. But to be honest, it's hard to get to see a, a GP anyway. But what they're trying to discourage is people who make appointments and don't show up. And I can understand that because if you go to a dentist, you're supposed to pay them if you miss it. So why not with the doctor? So, um, yeah, I just wrote down a few, few little notes. Um, Trump suggested that American companies could buy bits of the NHS as part of the post-Brexit trade deal when he came to the UK last June. Now people are fearful whether the NHS is going to be part of the trade deal. I think it's more likely it will be because England will no longer be in a strong position to negotiate. She will have lost her power once she leaves the European Union. And there will be people to say, oh, what, you're talking a load of cobblers. We're going to be strong. We're going to be that. All I'm going to say is, watch this space. It's just my opinion. I'm not stating it as a fact. Um, UK politicians were keen to strike a good trade deal with the US as post-Brexit replacement for the trade relationship they currently have with the EU, but is the sacrifice too high? From 500 million per week for prescriptions from America. We have loosened the rein from the EU and it's been tightened by the US. Because what the UK was saying is that, look, you're, you're, we're paying you too much money for your prescription. So we're going to source subscription elsewhere and they're going to be cheaper. And so by doing that, they've saved themselves 100, 150 million pounds. But is the US going to be happy that they're, they're short 150 million pounds? And that's why I was talking about that ship. It's all linked because the US... what? I, a, a profiteers. They want to make a profit. So why would they, when they're looking so much to spend, you know, to make the most out of the prescriptions and medical supplies, why would they offer free supplies and free medical to foreigners? Because the people in the Latin Americas and in the Caribbean, they're foreigners. So why would they offer free treatment, free medical supplies, and yet they're banging on our backs in the UK about how we're giving out free NHS healthcare and we need to be charging. So something doesn't gel here. You can't have one rule for one and another rule for another. So there has to be some, some deal that's going on with the government of Latin America and the government of the Caribbean, what is the incentive? Why would the United States offer free health care and free medical supplies? I mean, no wonder people are shitting bricks, honestly, because, you know, it's just, it's just so unusual with a country whose indigenous people can't even get health care. If they do, it's the worst kind. 
if they can afford it, that is. Anyway, Trump announced during this, his visit that he wanted a new phenomenal trade deal with the UK. And unfortunately, NHS is to be part of that deal. That is why I wonder. Oh, yeah, I've said that a bit. What was the trade deal with the Caribbean? Oh, I've said that bit. Trump is probably planning for the big farmer who have already invested 57 million into UK's NHS charities and private healthcare, private American healthcare company, whose main aim would be to make a profit to operate or own parts of the government owned NHS. You see, the big pharma companies, they've, they've invested 57 million into NHS charities. They're going to want that back. They're going to want to see an investment on their profit. They're not just giving money just for the hell of it. These are business people. An investigation by Bath University researchers into donations by Big Pharma and other industry bodies found the number of donations between 2014 and 2016 rose by a third and the value more than doubled. The NHS is being held ransom first, but oh, I said that. The Missing Medicines Coalition found that the NHS was fleeced by 458 million by pharmaceutical companies in 2017 to 2018 for life saving medicines that were originally developed with public funding but are now patented by Big Pharma, the term critics use for the giants of the drug industry. British working class are overwhelmingly against any privatisation of their healthcare services. But what about the elite? Do they care whether or not it's privatised? They can afford it. Some people think Boris is lying about the NHS not being a part of the US trade deal. I don't think Boris is lying. I think he, his hands are tied. I don't think he can protect the NHS in a trade deal with the US. The Prime Minister, like Trade Secretary Liz Truss and former Prime Minister Theresa May, have repeatedly claimed that the health service will be off the table during the post-Brexit negotiations with Donald Trump. But you can't safeguard the NHS if you have no power. We need to accept that the NHS could be sold off bit by bit to Donald Trump, UK great pharma companies in the UK and American private healthcare giants. Concerns have been raised by Scotland's health secretary, Jean Freeman, for holding a secret meeting or secret meetings. I think there was five of them with US pharmaceutical companies in preparation for the trade deal after Brexit. Not much of a secret though, if we know about it. We know that there were five and they all discussed and in each of them, apparently the prices of and prescriptions was discussed. Channel 4 documentary Dispatches, which was the inspiration for this video, revealed the price NHS pays for its drugs had been under discussion. Apparently, they're not allowed to mention the word drug pricing. It's got to be called valuing innovation. Drugs are much more expensive in the US, which once again rings alarm bells as to why they're offering them free to foreigners um, via the US Navy ship. Currently, the UK can block American drugs not deemed value for money and allow cheaper alternatives to be prescribed to patients, which saves the NHS hundreds of millions of pounds a year. However, the system could be under threat under the new transatlantic trade deal. According to a series of tweets made by the dispatches program, there have been six official meetings between the British trade negotiators and their US counterparts to discuss a future trade deal. A spokesperson for the Department of International Trade said the sustainability of the NHS is absolutely priority for the government. But supposing sustaining the NHS means privatising it, what then? If, supposing they feel they can't sustain it without it going being privatised. They play on words. Boris Johnson has asserted that the NHS is not on the table, but President Donald Trump is known to be keen to change how drugs are approved for use in the UK by the body NICE. 
and the price that is paid. Until April this year, Mr. Vaughan was the top lawyer in the office of the US Trade Representative and a key player in recent trade deals with Canada, Mexico and South Korea, which saw the US win key concessions over the price those countries paid for US medicines. Mr. Vaughan said, I would expect US negotiators to see what we could do in terms of getting increased access to the British market. That's what we do. I think it's going to be likely to come up because the US mentioned pharmaceuticals in its negotiating objectives. The programme focuses on drug Humira used to treat 46,000 patients in the UK who suffer from diseases like rheumatoid, arthritis and Crohn's disease, made by US drugs company Abivi. It is the single most expensive drug for the NHS, costing 450 million a year. Last year, the NHS started prescribing cheaper alternatives to Humira that will save the health service 150 million a year. So, all we've got to do is wait and see. I mean, we've still got a lot of people who are very optimistic about leaving Brexit and you know I think if you are well off it really will not impact you at all but if you're a working class or a middle class person and you rely on the NHS and you you know you rely on paying I think I don't even know how much it is to pay for prescriptions these days but I think in some cases about 11 pounds but if the prescription and prices go up how are you going to afford that? What's going to happen? And if you haven't been um, strategic enough to take out, you know, long time insurance with Bupa or something, what are you going to do? So I don't know. I think we have to prepare for any eventuality. We don't know if it's going to happen. All we can do is hypothesize. And that's what I'm doing. And that's all for now. Bye bye.